Hey, NH students, it's so good to see you today. My name is Pastor Colin, and I'm so glad that you joined us for another segment of The Word. Today, we're going to be in uh, Romans chapter 8, specifically verses 31 through 34. You're going to see it on the screen. Uh, what I want to do uh, is, is work through it holistically today, take a few major themes from it, let it work on our heart, but then uh, I think take it into our lives. So let's start with verse 31. You'll see it here. It says, what then shall we say in response to these things? We're talking about the things before verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? Right? And such a, such a cool verse. And I think it's, uh, if it's not a verse that you've taken the time to memorize it, I would encourage you. Let's write that on our heart. I think that it's something encouraging that when you're struggling with something, uh, how encouraging would it be to come back and say, man, I feel like a lot of things are against me, but I know that my God is for me. I think that though uh, you walk through this life and you may feel some pressures from school, you might feel some pressures from home, but I want you to remember this is, you know what? Because who is for me, nothing can be against me. Yes, as a believer, we feel the, the tugs and the pulls from Satan, the enemy, but this is what we know is that because he is for me, nothing and nobody can be victorious over me because my God was victorious for me. Let's check out verse 32. He who did not spare, I think this word is neat. We'll talk about that in just a second. Spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? And I think that this word is really important. And so let's take a look at this. A lot of really cool things going on here. Um, the original word that was written here basically means he's not going to withhold, meaning he's not going to keep for himself. Though he wants it, he's not going to keep it back from us. Instead, he's going to give it away. But he gave him up for who? For us. For you. For me. His most prized possession. He did not withhold, but he gave him up for us. And so what it's doing is it's tugging on the character of God. The idea that the same God that did not keep but instead gave away, if he did the ultimate sacrifice, he gave us the best gift, then how will he not also give us all things? How is he not going to give us the day to day if he gave us his son? The same God that did not withhold is the same God who gives. And so we say, thank you, Lord, for being the God that gave us his best and is going to continue to do that throughout the course of our life. So let's continue. Let's check out verse 33. Who will bring any charge? This word is cool to me. We'll talk about that in a second. Against those whom God has chosen. And we'll talk about that as well. This word charge um, basically would be used in, in a criminal court of law to say you are guilty. And because you're guilty, you have to uh, suffer some form of punishment. You're going to take a sentence upon yourself. Uh, and so uh, what they're pointing out is basically you've been set free by the highest of authorities. You might feel worldly guilty, but the king of the world has chosen you. And so if you've been chosen by the king of the world, then who is to say that you still have a charge against you because the king has called you free? So we don't have to feel like we're under charge anymore. We have been set free. Let's keep going. Verse 34. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who is raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Uh, super neat things here. We're going to talk about the story of the gospel. I also want to highlight this word, interceding. This last part sets up the entirety of this. The idea is that this power comes from this truth. The idea that, no, Christ came, but he died for us. But more importantly, he didn't just die. This is the most important part, is that he was raised to life again. Now he's with God, and now he's interceding. So this is what this means, this word interceding. He's our advocate. He's on our team. He's on our side. So when God sees you one day, he's not going to see your flaws. He's not going to see your imperfections. He's not going to see your sin. He's going to see you perfectly because you have an advocate in heaven that has made you perfect by his blood and his sacrifice. And so, NA students, an incredible text today, super encouraging to us. This is what I hope you take away from it. God is powerful. 
God is loving. God has redeemed you. You're set free because of the blood of Jesus. He is our advocate. So glad that you joined us today for another segment of The Word.